Hey, what's up everybody? This is Lex with Terra Fresh, and I wanted to take a quick minute to do another video today. I got a question a couple days ago from Dave, um, and he asked, what is the best thing to put around tomato plants uh, to keep the bugs away? And I'm not 100% sure if this is going to answer his question. I don't know if he's looking for like a, a product that he can use or, or what, but I want to um, kind of share what has worked for me to help with the bugs in my garden. And that is companion planting. Um, I will intersperse a couple of different uh, flowers and herbs in with my tomatoes, and it helps to repel the insects. And uh, borage is one of them that I use a lot. Nasturtium is another one. Uh, basil helps. And so I kind of wanted to go through why or why and how, what the mechanism is for, for that working. And to do that, I need to tell you a story about uh, some turkeys. And there's these, these researchers, this is in, in a book I read a couple of years ago, but these researchers were studying turkeys and they noticed that um, kind of inexplicably, every once in a while, a mother turkey would kill one of the chicks that had just hatched um, out, of her, out of her eggs. And they were, you know, trying to figure out why, why, why is that happening? The, you know, turkeys are very maternal and they're, you know, they gather their chicks around and they protect them and they're, you know, very maternal. But uh, they noticed that they would, every once in a while, they would kill a chick. And so, you know, they, they watched and, and uh, came up with a hypothesis that if the chick, once it hatched, made the noise that a baby chick is supposed to make, that makes a cheap, cheap noise, if it makes that noise, then the, the turkey would mother, mother that chick. And if it didn't make that noise, then for, you know, whatever reason, um, it, it saw it as an enemy and killed it. And so uh, to test our hypothesis, they they got this stuffed polecat. And a polecat is uh, kind of like a ferret, um, but they're, they're wild in some parts of the country. And that's, you know, that was kind of the natural enemy to turkeys in this part of the country where they were doing this experiment. And so they got a, a polecat that was dead and stuffed and um, rigged it up so that it would move towards the turkey. And it moved towards the turkey and the turkey would go and attack it to try to defend her her you know, chicks, her baby chicks, uh, from the polecat. So, you know, they knew it was an, an enemy. And so then they, they took the polecat and they put a tape recorder inside of it that made the cheap, cheap noise that a baby chick does. And they sent the polecat in again and they made the cheap, cheap noise and the mother hen, the, the mother turkey, you know, gathered it up underneath her, her wings and a mother that just like the rest of her chicks. So, um, you know, turkeys have very small brains compared to us and, um, you know, very, very minute amount of computing power in their brains uh, that we did, a very, very small fraction of the, the computing power that we do. And so, you know, through the centuries that developed this cue that, you know, it, it, it can't take the time to, to look back and reason and say, okay, so this looks like a chick. It just came out of the egg that I laid. You know, there's no, none of this reasoning that's going on in the, in the turkey's brain. And so the one cue that it has is if it makes the cheap, cheap noise, that's, that's the baby chick. If it doesn't, then it must be an enemy. And so um, the research has proved that you can, you can hack that. Um, it's a very, very useful thing for a turkey to be able to have that cue um, so that they don't have to waste any of their very limited amount of computing power making that decision on whether they're going to mother that chick or not. They hear the sound and they mother it, they don't, and they don't. And so, um, you know, in, in the book it talks about how humans, even with our vastly superior computing power in our brains, uh, still have some of those things where we, we can be hacked in the, in the same way as the turkeys can. But I don't want to get into that. It's another, another big, long conversation. But that is the mode of action with uh, companion planting. You know, uh, little insects have even smaller brains and even less computing power than a turkey does. And so it has a single cue and it might be the sight or it might be the smell of a tomato plant that draws it to the tomato plant or to whatever whatever type of plant that they're, they're used to feeding on. And so if you can plant other things around that so that it confuses them, then they'll, they'll just fly on by in search of in search of the cheap cheap noise you know they have that one cue that draws them to the plant and if that is thrown off by a different smell or a different look or a different texture of the leaves <clears throat> when they land on um, something that isn't a tomato like a nasturtium or a uh, or a borage plant um, 
then then they'll they'll move on and it kind of camouflages your tomato plants from the bugs so uh anyway that's uh kind of i thought thought that was kind of a cool cool story and a, and a good correlation um between the two that they they've proved that the turkeys are this one way they have this one cue that uh, tells them to be a mother and if that doesn't happen then they they don't they treat the thing as an enemy and um you know bugs are the same way they've got one one cue they've got one type of plant they're looking for and if you can camouflage that in through smells and and sight and and texture and and, <clears throat> and different things that these different plants different companion plants have then um you'll be able to help keep the bugs away from your tomato plants and your other vegetables so anyway hopefully that helps uh dave um and uh everybody everybody that's looking for a way to keep keep bugs away that's a natural and and uh you know doesn't involve any any chemicals or, or pesticides so anyway hope that helps and uh, we'll talk to you all later have a great day and uh, we'll talk to you soon